All righty. Currently 9.03. Still got a couple minutes before 9.05 on class starts. Welcome everybody that's watching from YouTube. Hopefully uh, I can see you in class next time. Next time being tomorrow, um, which will be Wednesday, January the 3rd, because today, this day is Tuesday, January the 2nd, all right? Look forward to a good day of class today. I hope you are as well, because I definitely, definitely am. Um, today we got a, a decent amount on the agenda, introducing a couple new things, going over some others, and trying to clarify some information that uh, I believe some of you may be not so sure about or may need a little bit of help with. So I'm going to go over that today. You'll see what that is when we get to it. Um, hope everybody's doing well. I definitely am. Thank you for asking. And let's just wait till we get some students here in here before we get started, okay? All right. Good morning, Eduardo. Hope you're doing well. Glad to see you. I made it on time today. It's 9.05 currently up. Oh, I think Walter's coming in too. So great. We'll be able to go ahead and get things started off the bat. Let me make sure I get y'all down for attendance. Okay, let's see here. Walter and good morning, uh, Walter. Oh, let's see, where's Eduardo's name? There we go. I'll try to let more students in as you know the class progresses. Uh, good to see both of you. Hope y'all are doing well. Let me see. Respond to this uh, message on Canvas right quick. I'm gonna switch the screen over to Canvas. To respond to a message. All right, let me pull over the reading edge on Canvas. Okay. And put that on student view. All right, I'm going to share my screen real quick. So, how was y'all's uh, day yesterday? Y'all had a good day? Okay, great day. How y'all feeling this morning, Eduardo? How you feeling? Okay, I'm feeling okay. Okay, what about you, uh, Walter? How you feeling? Good. Okay, Walter. Question: Is that like a bunk bed over your head? I was. I've been wondering that. Yeah. Okay. I used to have one of those uh, when I was younger with. Um, I didn't have any siblings uh, at the time. I just wanted a bunk bed and my parents got me one. So I just, some night nice slipped at the top, some night nice slipped at the bottom. All right. But when I did have like relatives, like cousins come over, one of them might sleep at either one. But anyways, let's look, take a look at Canvas. Our daily reminder as always to always check our announcements and calendar. So let's take a look at the announcements. See what we have. I do have something new. Uh, today, we're gonna look at unit six, cycle two vocabulary, because we're going over a new set of vocabulary words. So this is where you can find it. We have uh, resemble, quarrel, 
dismay. You might remember that from uh, the reading yesterday. Yield. Um, this is like a, a miser. Um, plotted, shamefaced, and vain. Okay. Well, that's the only recent thing we have in our announcements. We're actually going to go over these today in a little bit. So next, let's take a look at the calendar, see what we have for today, March the 2nd. For SFA class, you see we got a decent amount of stuff in here. At the class start time, 9.05 as usual, the Zoom meeting information, and we have the bell work for today, okay? So let's take a look at today's bell work. All right, as you can see here, uh, we got a new list of vocabulary words, so per usual. I want y'all to rate each of them. So type them out and let me know if you know this word with the plus sign. Um, if the word looks kind of familiar, but you're not quite sure with it, uh, what it is, be sure to type this slash symbol right beside it, the backslash symbol right here. And if you just completely don't know the word, hadn't heard it before, or just don't know it, put a question mark as it says here. So of course the instructions say list each vocabulary word then type the symbol response seen in the box to the right, which is right here, uh, beside each listed word. And instead of typing a check mark, however, you may type the backslash symbol. So for each of those words, okay? Uh, good morning, Rosalinda, hope you're doing well. Uh, next, let's take a look back at the calendar, see what else we have. Uh, next, we again, we have our unit six, cycle two vocabulary. So why don't we just go ahead and take a look at those together, right? See what each of those mean. Okay, the first one, resemble. Raise your hand if you're familiar with that word or if you've heard it before. Resemble. Walter, what, do you, uh, what does resemble mean? Or where have you heard it before that you can remember? Well, if you need a little help, we can take a look at it here, Walter. So resemble, pronounced resemble, it basically means to have a similar appearance, okay? So if something resembles something else, that means they kind of look alike, they kind of favor, you know? Uh, think of like twins, you know, this person might resemble the other. Um, you know, cars might resemble. This car might resemble another car, like maybe they have the same color or similar shapes or something. That's what resemble means, okay? Uh, the sample sentence that it has right beside it says, my grandmother always tells me that I resemble my mother. Like she tells me basically I look like my mom. One moment, y'all, it's kind of loud outside. Let me put my sign up. So let me quiet down. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, was Vice Principal or Assistant Principal Chandler talking with somebody, a little noisy. All right, next, let's take a look at uh, the word quarrel. Um, raise your hand if you recognize the word quarrel. All right. It's okay if y'all don't. This is kind of like a, I was about to say a really old word, but most words are old. Uh, it's like a a really old fashioned word um, used a lot back in the day. Um, quarrel, that's how you pronounce it, quarrel, that Q-U-A-R has that core sounded, quarrel. It uh, basically means an argument or dispute. So back in the day, like medieval times, somebody might say, hey, we have a, still like saying we're arguing, we, we have a quarrel or like some kind of a issue, you know, between other people. 
Uh, so a quarrel means an argument or dispute. Um, I remember back in the first Harry Potter movie. Anybody seen the, the first Harry Potter movie? No? Yeah, y'all don't watch Harry Potter? There's like this professor named uh, Professor Quirrell, I think. He was like the, the villain in that movie, like the, the guy Voldemort was with, but I guess y'all don't watch Harry Potter like that. That's fine. I like Harry Potter. Um, it's a sample sentence right here with Quirrell uh, states, I quarrel with my brother a lot. Excuse me. <clears throat> I quarrel with my brother a lot because we disagree about whose turn it is to play our video games. Good morning, Darius. Again, quarrel. It says, I quarrel with my brother a lot because we disagree about whose turn it is to play our video games. So basically, they're like arguing. Uh, one brother thinks it's his turn to play video games. The other one thinks it's their turn. But again, that's what quarrel means. Uh, Darius, right now we're going over vocabulary words and try to figure it out. Next, we have dismay. Okay. Dismay. I don't know why, like, the D is missing from that first part, but it's dismay. Um, dismay basically means uh, disappointed. You might be kind of saddened when you see the. Um, when you see something or disappointed when you see something, that's what dismay means. It's kind of like a, a mood, you know? I'm feeling dismay because I couldn't sleep in a little bit longer this morning because I was tired. Some of you may be feeling dismay because we're not having in-person school. Um, you might be in dismay because your favorite sports team lost the game last night. Uh, Eduardo, why don't you use dismay in a sentence? Um, I feel a little sleepy. You use dismay though. How does uh, dismay work in that sentence, Eduardo? I think it's where well, you said it. You said it, so you were feeling a little tired because you didn't sleep, so I just used it. Yeah, well, I said um, I feel dismay well, but uh, because I'm sleepy, but I didn't get to sleep a little extra. Um, remember, another example I said was um, like your favorite sports team losing, so I feel dismay that my favorite sports team is losing. Remember, dismay basically means uh, you're sad or disappointed, okay? So try again, Eduardo. Use dismay in a, another sentence. It basically means you're disappointed. You can do it. Just... Like another, just think of something you're disappointed about and use dismay in a sentence talking about it. I'm disappointed that the fence in the backyard, like there's a fence around the backyard that isn't fixed. Oh, okay. So instead of saying disappointed, you would say, uh, I'm feeling dismay because the fence in the backyard isn't fixed, right? Because dismay basically means disappointed. You can like switch those words. With a lot of these definitions, if you think of a sentence using something with a de uh, definition, like instead of saying, I had a argument with my brother, you can switch that word argument with quarrel. I had a quarrel with my brother. Or instead of saying, I'm feeling disappointment because I don't know, I missed the bus today, the school bus today. You can say, I feel dismay because I missed the bus today, okay? A lot of these definitions right here have like words in them that are similar. Think of like synonyms that you can switch the new vocabulary word with in a sentence to kind of better familiarize yourself with them. The sample uh, sentence that they have over here says, to my dismay, I learned that my grandfather was in the hospital and was very sick. 
basically, you know, they felt dis, uh, disappointment because their grandfather was in the hospital and sick. All right, next, let's look at the word yield. Uh, yield basically means to produce something uh, such as a plant or crop. Some places you might see yield being to slow down, but uh, you know, there's multiple definitions of that word. But for this definition of the word, we're gonna say to yield as in to produce something such as a plant or a crop. And the definition we have here says, we were excited to see that the peppers we planted were starting to yield a tasty treat. So they're starting to produce a tasty treat, okay? Um, Rosalinda, why don't you give us an example of uh, using the word uh, yield in a sentence? You still there, Rosalinda? What does yield mean again? Yield means to produce something, uh, such as a plant or a crop. And look at the sample of sentence here. It says, we were excited that the peppers we planted were starting to yield a tasty treat. So the peppers they planted started to produce a tasty treat because they planted the seeds and they grew up and the seeds yielded a plant, right? So why don't you give us an example of yield in a sentence, like Rosalinda? The fresh produce in the garden were ready to yield and be delivered to all the grocery stores. Okay, yep, that works. Good job, Rosalinda. All right, next, let's look at miser, okay? Miser, as you look at this definition right here, is a person who strongly dislikes spending money, a stingy person, okay? Some of y'all may think like, hey man, um, Maybe I wanted this expensive gift for Christmas and you feel like uh, somebody that you actually give it to you may be like a miser because it was so expensive, they were kind of stingy or something like that. A uh, cynic example says, the old man who owns the jewelry store is a miser who doesn't want to spend any of his money. When I think of miser, I think of um, Scrooge. Do y'all remember, uh, or have y'all heard of the story, A Christmas Carol with Scrooge and like the ghosts in it? Raise your hand if you are familiar with that. Yep. But you know, Scrooge in that story was like a miser. He was like very cheap and stingy with his money. Um, his money. Um, when I was young, there was a, a cartoon Scrooge, but it was like a, a duck named Scrooge McDuck. It was like a duck tails. It had like the little, um, duck nephews and like Donald Duck in it. Um, well, it's maybe a Scrooge or a miser. Uh, good morning, Demage. So you just came in. I'll get you for attendance in a little bit. Uh, currently, we're going over vocabulary. Um, but yeah, that's the word miser. Next, we'll look at plotted. Uh, plotted means slow, uh, excuse me, walk slowly and heavily trudged. Okay. Plotted meaning you walked slowly and heavily trudged. A cynic example says, we plotted through the mud and crossed the creek to the other side of the trail. Okay. So if they're walking through mud, of course, they're going to walk real slowly because, you know, it's thick and sticky and wet. And they'll probably like walk kind of heavily because, you know, the mud is sticking to their feet. Next, we have shame faced. Okay. It's like a compound word with two put together. You have shamed as the first one and faced as the second, okay? Shamefaced means feeling and showing shame, okay? So basically, if you're embarrassed or something, you're shamefaced. A cynic's example right here says, when I broke the window with my baseball, I apologized to my mother looking shamefaced. Uh, Quanisha Banks, why don't you give us a, an example of a sentence using the word shamefaced? What do you think, Quanisha? Mm 
Do you know? Do you hear me, Quinesh? You was just looking and you looked away. Do you, um, can you use shame face in an example, Quinesha? All right, how about, uh, let's see, uh, Dimaje Lister, why don't you give, it a, give us an example of the word shame face used in a sentence? Come on, y'all, the quicker we get through these, the quicker we can go. Does anybody uh, have an example? All right, well, I think of the word shame face again is kind of like a, a word meaning, uh, excuse me, a feeling of shame or showing shame or basically like you're embarrassed. Um, one time when I was a student at school, I like fell in the hallway in front of everybody and I was kind of embarrassed for it. So when I got up, I kind of was feeling shame faced. You know, I was like, man, everybody saw that. I dropped my books everywhere and all that. Next, we have the word vain. Okay. Not like vain, like your, you know, blood vessels going through the veins in your body. It's a different kind of vein. This vein means overly proud or conceited. Okay. Kind of cocky, kind of full of themselves, you know. That's what a vein means in this sense. The other vein with like blood and stuff, that's V-E-I-N. This vein is V-A-I-N, okay? A cynics example right, right here says, my sister is vain and thinks she is the most gorgeous girl alive. So because she thinks she's the most gorgeous girl alive, he's calling his sister or her sister really vain. All right, and those are the vocabulary words that we're going over for this cycle. Let's take a, uh, another look at the calendar real quick, see what else we got, okay? Went over the vocabulary words. Next, let's go over a reading for today, which will be uh, the farmer and the stork, okay? So let me stop sharing my screen so I can move my camera over. Also, let me go ahead and get people who just came in down for attendance. Uh, we got Walter was he okay oh, I forget Darius is here Rosalinda came in Maje is here okay all right so I'm gonna move my camera over so we can take a look at the reading for today and after we take a look at the reading for today, we're going to look at the team discussion for today. I've condensed it and made it pretty short, sweet, and simple. Okay. So, again, we're still looking at Aesop's fables, even though we're on another cycle. And this time, for today's reading, again, we'll be looking at the farmer and the stork. If you're wondering what a stork is, that's basically a type of bird, and you can kind of see it in this image, like a bunch of birds that he caught in this net, but we'll get to what that is in a moment with the reading, okay? So let's start the reading, and here it goes. Follow along, please, so y'all can follow along with the story. A farmer placed nets on his newly planted fields and caught a number of cranes that had come to pick his corn seed. Among the cranes, there was a stork. Please spare me, master, begged the stork, and let me go free. I am not a crane. I am a stork of excellent character. Look at my feathers, my legs, and my beak. You can see that in no way do these feathers resemble those of the cranes. Remember, resemble basically means looks alike. So he's saying that these feathers don't look alike those of the cranes. The farmer was not moved by these words. All that you say may be true, he said, but I caught you with these robbers, so I have every reason to think you are a robber too. 
And the little quote at the bottom says, you may be judged by the company you keep. Okay. So let's see. Rosalinda, what do you think the theme is of this story? What they're trying to tell us? If you hang out with some bad people, uh, people might think you're also bad as well. Yep, that is true. You may not be bad as well, but you're right. People may think that you may be judged by other people because of the company you keep. Right. Um, think of that old uh, saying. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it, but it says birds of a feather flock together. Uh, so people, if they see you with a certain crowd of people, they may associate you with them. Not necessarily mean you are with them or like them, but because you're with them or you're doing the things that they're doing, they might kind of look at you in that same sense. Kind of judging a book by its cover, but it's something naturally people do just from first glance. Um, it's, again, not necessarily a right thing to do, but it's just kind of natural. Think of like also the term um, first impressions. Uh, you know, when you first meet somebody, how they kind of look at you, um, see what the things you say or the things you do, they kind of automatically get an idea or an image of you. Of, this is the type of person you are. Again, is that a right thing to do? Not necessarily, but it's a natural things people just kind of automatically do instinctively. All right. Now, after reading that, now let's take a look at the team discussion assignment that we have, okay? I'm gonna share my screen again. All right, let's go to Canvas for the class. After the reading, we have the team discussion for today. I have two questions on here. Uh, the first question asks, what is the theme of the fable, the farmer and the stork? That's basically what we were just talking about, right? Um, Eduardo, in your own words, what would you say is the theme of the farmer and the stork? Okay, Quanisha, what do you think? Think about what Rosalinda was just saying. Do you know uh, Quanisha? Give me a thumbs up if you do, thumbs down if you're not sure. It's okay if you don't know. No? How are you doing this morning, Quanisha? We, we haven't heard from you. You doing okay? Okay, great. All right. Well, just think about uh, what the theme was telling us, like the message was um, getting from the story. Because remember, the theme is kind of like the message that is going on that the story is trying to tell us overall, like the lesson learned. Next, number two, which vocabulary word has the word arrogant as a synonym and humble as an antonym? Remember, synonyms means like a similar word, okay? So a word that means something similar to arrogant. Uh, an antonym means like the opposite. So what vocabulary word is the opposite of being humble, okay? Let's take a look back at the list. Remember, we can find the list in the announcement section. Go to unit six, cycle two vocabulary. So out of resemble, quarrel, dismay, yield, miser, plotted, shamefaced, and vain, which ones mean a synonym, an antonym for those words. Again, let's see, where is it? Team discussion. Which one is a synonym for arrogant? Arrogant means you're like um, really boastful and bragging about something. You're really full of yourself, you know, super cocky. I'm so great and all that. And you're really vocal about it. You tell everybody how great you are. Uh, a synonym for arrogant and an antonym for humble. Remember, humble means you're kind of like a, you're more timid, you're more shy, like you know certain things about you, but you don't go around bragging about it, you know? You kind of like keep to yourself about how good you are and stuff like that. 
okay? It means the opposite of humble. And those are your two team discussion questions I have posted for today, okay? All right. Next. Let me make sure, is everybody? Yep. All right, does anybody have any questions of me about the uh, vocabulary or bell work or team discussion? Raise your hand if you do. No? Darius, you doing okay? You awake with us? Uh, I think Darius is uh, taking an extended nap. Good morning, Darius, you doing all right? Okay, great. Well, that's basically it for class for today. Thank you all for showing up. I got you all down for attendance. If you need help with anything, feel free to reach out to me, okay? Call me at the school, message me on the Canvas inbox, or you know, just let me know, all right? Uh, again, that's it for today. I will see y'all tomorrow for SFA class, okay? So y'all have a great day, okay? All right, see you later.